The mission to kill America's most wanted man took less than an hour two years ago today, but as a new HBO documentary shows us, tracking down Osama bin Laden took two decades. It all started with a talented group of women inside the CIA, one of those now a professor at Coastal Carolina University. WPDE News Channel 15's Alex Heaton sat down with one of the true insiders of one of the most secretive espionage tales of our generation. That's Alex. right, guys. It's really fascinating that some of the secrets of the war against Al Qaeda lie right here in our very own backyard. And in just one visit to Coastal's campus, we learned the tales of the morality of war, enhanced interrogation techniques, and the sisterhood of women who made tracking down Osama bin Laden possible. Absolute incomprehensible mayhem. He quickly rose to the status of public enemy number one. This is perhaps the most horrific sight anyone could have witnessed uh, in a lifetime. After the September 11th terrorist attacks, Osama bin Laden became a household name. But a group of CIA agents were tracking him before we even knew his identity, before that America's most wanted target was on his back, before the world even knew how big of a threat Al Qaeda was. He was somehow involved, at least funding, a bunch of terrorist groups whose members had fought in Afghanistan and then they were going overseas and they were blowing stuff up. All these little breadcrumbs were leading back to uh, Peshawar, Pakistan, where bin Laden and, and a whole bunch of other groups were based. So we started kind of picking at that, picking at those threads, and then it was just a process of taking all these little scattered bits and pieces and trying to fit them into some sort of picture that made sense. So we knew that this was actually a terrorist organization. Cynthia Storr is now a professor at Coastal Carolina University, but she started her career at the CIA more than 20 years ago. Her work in the counterterrorist unit would be instrumental in tracking the leader of one of the most well-established terrorist groups in the world. I had the Afghan account, so my job was to look at what was going on in Afghanistan and the networks that were flowing out of there. And so, of course, I kept following this worldwide movement, whatever this was. She and a group of female colleagues aptly named the Sisterhood spent the better part of two decades connecting the dots between terrorist cells, following the breadcrumbs back to bin Laden. When we first started following bin Laden, he was living in the open, but he didn't acknowledge to people, even his friends, that he actually was running a terrorist group. You know, he was the sort of the godfather figure. <laughs> um, so we were collecting a lot of information and we slowly began in the late 90s trying to disrupt the networks that he was associated with and managed to disrupt some attacks. We focused a lot more on the kinds of operations that would disrupt attacks, capture people, send them to the countries of origin so they could be prosecuted, that sort of thing. We still weren't really trying to capture or kill bin Laden. It takes presidential authority to do that sort of thing. And I can understand presidents feeling like nothing had happened yet that would justify dropping bombs on somebody's head in a foreign country, right? Where there were two huge buildings, two huge towers, there is now nothing. It was pandemonium. Uh, well, 9-11 ended that. The imperative after 9-11 obviously was to dismantle or destroy Al-Qaeda. And that's precisely where one of the most critically acclaimed motion pictures of the year begins. Catherine Bigelow's Zero Dark Thirty shows the hunt for bin Laden through the eyes of Maya, a fictional CIA analyst. The character in the film had that particular assignment, find that one career, to try to get bin Laden himself. If you're right, the whole world's going to win in on this. But was Maya based on a single female agent in the CIA? Or was the redhead on a tireless crusade to pinpoint bin Laden's exact location actually a compilation of the work that Storer and her colleagues spent so many years piecing together? The job that this character does in the movie is several different people's jobs. They're using information that goes all the way back to stuff we developed in the, in the 90s. So it really is an enormous team effort. For someone so close to the operation for so many years, Storer says she has some conflicting thoughts about the film. I'm very happy that they chose a woman as the lead character. That was great. It's not just the guys who shoot things, it's the women who use their brains. This is good. What part convinced you? Her confidence. But she does question how the film dealt with the morality of war and enhanced interrogation methods. Any questions? Storer says the torturous techniques that riddle Bigelow's film skew pretty far from reality. The U.S. just doesn't do things the way it was shown in the beginning of Zero Dark Thirty. And I'm not saying that some of those techniques couldn't be considered torture. I mean, certainly you can consider waterboarding torture. But it's not done like that. It does a disservice to my former colleagues, just making them look like a bunch of brutes. 
um, it does a disservice to the U.S. government. And that's one of the many reasons she was excited to team up with two former analysts and director Greg Barker for the HBO documentary Manhunt. He was going to treat the subject matter just sort of dispassionately in the sense of not putting any kind of political spin on it, but just letting us tell our stories and then trying to put that story out there. And that's the first time that anybody had ever been willing to do that. Unlike Zero Dark Thirty, Manhunt goes back to the early 1990s and puts all the pieces together through 9-11 and then the hunt for bin Laden himself. Zero Dark Thirty and the documentary do share one common theme, though, that Cynthia says is crucial to understanding the whole story. We were really the the diggers, the investigators, the uh, putting together of the pieces. And, and we didn't really have a term for ourselves, but we were often thought of ourselves as sisters in that sense, like brothers in arms of it, we were sisters. They both tell the stories of war and espionage through the eyes of strong women instead of leading men. So many women come up to me and it's been, it's been sort of your average working mother, uh, college students, some very high powered women in New York and Washington now, I can add to that list, um, who come up and they thank us for our service and they thank us for talking about the role of women. What's ironic though is how vital female analysts were to the manhunt for bin Laden. What do you think Osama bin Laden would have to say about a group of women being responsible for tracking him for 20 years, being ultimately responsible for his death? You know, it's funny, it is the supreme irony, right? Women should be pregnant and barefoot and covered up and in the kitchen, and, and here they are going after him. Today marks two years since Navy SEAL Team 6 raided that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. And although Storer wasn't actively involved in that aspect of the manhunt, she said her first thought was, Good, we got him. But then there's no time to celebrate because your brain automatically goes to the next thing, which is, okay, who's going to take over from him? Are there going to be revenge attacks? What's the organization going to be like now? Is the American public still at risk? You know the war isn't over. We've just managed to kill a leader. And that's not a just, and it's important. The game is going to change, but how is it going to change? Al-Qaeda is an international terrorist network founded by Osama bin Laden in the late 1980s and is still active today. A pretty impressive story. So yeah. in the end, did she really like Zero Dark Thirty? Did you get the impression maybe she didn't so much? She said, you know, for someone so close to the operation for so many years, it was hard for her to believe everything that was in the film. But, but of course, she, she's in Manhunt, so she probably yes, has a she, more favorable opinion mm -hmm. of that. And she loves that the women are a strong leading aspect of those. Well, Manhunt premiered tonight on HBO at 8 o'clock, and if you missed it tonight, you can watch it on HBO On Demand. Yeah, we also have more information on your website, carolinalive.com. Alex, thanks so much. Thanks.